Walking in the woods one night on the outskirts of her town, an elderly lady found what she believed to be an abandoned baby lying on the ground. She would take it home with her and determine to raise it herself, but an unfortunate sequence of events would leave her community asking whether the baby Alyashunka was even human. Life in the rural areas of Russia's vast Siberian wilderness must seem like a harsh existence to outsiders who inhabit a more conventional world with its elaborate technologies and innovations. But to the Russian people, the existence they face in these cold and remote environments is not so different. At its most fundamental, living in the Ural Mountains involves the ever-frequent routine of waking, eating, working and sleeping, albeit in a manner which conformist society would surely find all too foreign, especially those not accustomed to barebone social conditions. This perception is only heightened by the sheer isolation and lack of outside contact the native peoples are otherwise completely comfortable with. Although modern luxuries such as radio and television are available, this way of life has been hard to abandon for these people since it is very much the same way their forefathers and ancestors eked out their existence. But from time to time, moments occur which break up the monotony of everyday life. When that one strange occurrence or sighting in these remote regions catches the attention of the entire world and brings an unwelcome stir of controversy to an otherwise unassuming populace. Such was the case in 1996, when a shocking discovery would lead one rural community in particular to be scrutinised by the international community. The incident took place in the territorial district of Kaishtem, a town located on the fringe of Chelyabinsk Oblast at the southern toe of the Ural Mountains. The territory was once the site of Chelyabinsk Fortress during the time of the Tsars and was the epicentre of the Soviet Union's economic push during the Great Patriotic War to expel the Nazi invaders. The site grew to house key production facilities, which produced tanks and armaments and boasted a population of almost a million, but the area's primary notoriety stems from its proximity to the nuclear research facilities that the Soviets erected during the Cold War. In 1957, the Mayak nuclear fuel reprocessing plant in Kaishtem exploded, releasing a cloud of radioactive dust which covered an estimated 20,000 kilometres and contaminated the nearby Tierka River. Remarkably, the town of Chelyabinsk was spared due to its distance from the site, but in the years that followed, dumping of radioactive residue in the river led to an environmental catastrophe. This caused some ecologists to claim that pollution in the region was responsible for numerous birth defects in the years after the disaster, and perhaps it was this incident that indirectly put the town of Kaishtem back on the map because ultimately, it may have led to another scandal, which would turn the collective scientific community on its head. As the story goes, one dark and eerily quiet night in May 1996, an elderly woman, Tamara Vasilyevna Prosferina, was out walking in the woods just outside the town of Karlinovi, when she heard an odd sound in the near distance. She headed towards it, thinking it could be a trapped animal, However, it sounded more like the wailed cry of an injured child. As she got closer, 
she looked down and found what she described as a baby lying in the debris of the town's rubbish dump. Without a moment's hesitation, she scooped it up and wrapped it in a blanket, then took it back to her apartment, where she determined she would raise the child herself. Two days later, she was visited by her daughter-in-law, also named Tamara, and as the latter was just about to leave, the elderly woman suggested that they feed the baby together. This proposal surprised the younger woman, as Tamara Senior had mentioned nothing of a child up until that point. But upon entering her mother-in-law's bedroom, she found something far beyond anything she could have expected. Tamara Junior stated that the infant looked far too small for a newborn baby, but what shocked her the most was its appearance. Its head was twice as big as the rest of its body, and it had hard, elongated features, which suggested they were built into the skull and its eyes, darting back and forth at an alarming speed, appeared much larger than those normally found on a baby, and the pupils could widen and elongate the same way a cat's eyes do. It appeared to have long arms and fingers, no visible signs of genitalia, and no eyelids. What shocked her the most was the way it ate, for it had no movable mouth that she could see, only a small hole. When it fed, it appeared to suck the food in rather than eat it. Although the creature had two sharp teeth in its mouth, she noted that it did not appear to be able to chew, yet somehow consumed the food rather quickly. It wagged a long scarlet tongue out at her. Tamara Jr. would later go on to claim that the baby was not of this planet, and for good reason, as we shall see. When she asked Tamara Sr. what the baby's name was, she replied that she had named it Alyashunka, or Little Alexei, apparently after one of her deceased grandsons. In the days that followed, Tamara Senior's strange behaviour was noted by the neighbours in her apartment block, as she went about cheerily claiming that she had a new baby, which they obviously doubted. They had described her as behaving erratically and at times evasive, especially when asked to give further details about the child. One night, a neighbour heard the older woman banging on her door, claiming she was frightened because her baby was ill and she had no medicine to give him. This resulted in local police being summoned to her apartment, but they came not to help her, but to take her into protective custody and carry her off to a nearby hospital for medical evaluation. However, other reports insist that she was discovered by neighbours and found to be severely ill and taken to hospital from there. Whatever the case, she was taken away against her will, claiming she had a baby in her room and could not be away from him, but the locals and the medical orderlies did not take her seriously. This stemmed from the belief that she was suffering from the early stages of a mental illness, a belief her neighbours and others who knew her stated as fact in regards to her actions in recent years. They reported that she displayed odd behaviour at times, and was known to frequent the local cemetery to steal flowers from graves and use them to decorate her house. What no one at the time seemed to realise was that with Tamara Senior away, this left little Alyashenka alone in the apartment. From here, events are unconfirmed, and there is speculation as to the veracity of what exactly happened, but from what has been pieced together, we are confident that subsequent events pit a policeman named Vladimir Bendlin at the centre of this mystery. Bendlin had supposedly arrived at the police station in the nearby town of Novogorny to question a man named Vladimir Nirdinov. Nirdinov was a known petty thief and criminal who had been detained in relation to an incident regarding stolen power cables. As the interrogation progressed, the policeman was shocked when Nirdinov told him that he had in his possession a dead baby, that he wanted to give to him, as he had no use for such a thing and no idea what else to do with it. Bendlin agreed to go back to Nirdinov's apartment and take a look at the supposed dead infant, and it was there that he found what he could only describe as the dried up mummified remains of a small child. But what was odd about those remains was how it looked so much like an unborn fetus malformed and emaciated. The body was greyish and lacked any trace of hair, 
its head splotched with darkened spots, and it barely measured 10 inches in height. From his account, Benlin asked Nirdinov how he came about obtaining this body, but again, we can only speculate from this point forwards. Supposedly, Nirdinov spent time in the apartment of Tamara Senior, and was present whenever she fed Alyushanka, but was out of town when she was detained for medical evaluation. He then returned and found the child, having died of thirst and hunger, and took the remains back to his home. However, other sources state that Tamara Jr. herself called Nirdinov to come and check on the baby with her, as it tended to frighten her when she was alone. Upon finding Alyashanka lying dead, the grief-stricken Tamara handed the body to Nirdinov in order to give it a proper burial, something he had apparently never gotten around to doing. What is certain is that Bendlin took the body away from Nirdinov and looked to have its DNA analysed, perhaps in the hopes of finding someone who might have been a relative, or on the other hand, to ascertain whether it was a hoax that could be written off. Instead, he was in for a surprise. Forensic analyst and clinical expert, Dr. Lyobov Ramanova, stated that her tests appeared to show signs that the infant's body and skin were not of a regular human child, but something altogether alien. She described numerous features that seemed impossible for a child to have, even in severe cases of deformity or birth defects. Romanova stated how the skull was composed of only four bones, and the shape indicated an unnatural elongation. The fingers were long and pointed, the body far too short to naturally support the head, and the shape of the head cavity was especially sharp and pointed, a feature which no malformed infant she had ever come across had shown before. To her, and she put it mildly to Benlin, the baby was not of human origin, and could not have been a human child to begin with. Soon afterwards, Tamara's neighbours began spreading rumours that she had been raising an alien baby, and word soon reached the attention of the local press. A local television broadcaster caught wind of the story and contacted Bendlin for information on the creature. This prompted him to record footage of him inspecting the body. It shows the body and its size in relation to Bendlin's hand as he moves and turns it over, and from the manner it is observed, we can see that no one had a clear idea of exactly what this small entity was. These initial reports eventually generated increased media attention, as television reporters and newspaper journalists began to visit Carla Novi to find out more about the Kaishtem alien, and it was evident that anyone who knew anything could be interviewed. There are reports of locals who would corroborate or sell any information they had for a good price, and many journalists lapped it up. Even the Japanese broadcasting corporations MTV Japan and Azahai TV did an editorial on Elioshanka, and in the words of one journalist, threw money at anyone who could tell them about the alien. Many locals even went so far as to accuse Tamara Jr. and Nirdinov of orchestrating the whole thing, claiming it was all a hoax that they had concocted to make money from. But the fact was that neither Tamara Jr nor Nirdinov went forward to sell information for monetary gain at all, thus seemingly contradicting these statements. Perhaps most unsurprisingly, with the arrival of numerous journalists and TV reporters, there came an increased number of UFO experts hoping to get a glimpse of the baby Alyoshunka. What no one knew at the time was that the baby was no longer even in Kaishtem. It had been handed over by Bendlin to a UFO research academy headed by the noted and respected ufologist, Boris Solotov, who claimed he wanted to conduct further testing on the body. Bendlin's hopes for a definitive answer started to dwindle as weeks turned into months, and no word came back on the results. When Zolotov was finally located, he gave a bizarre media interview regarding baby Alyoshunka's fate. According to him, he had asked one of his assistants to transport the body by car, to a lab in another town, when out of nowhere, a large metallic craft landed in the middle of the road, blocking the vehicle's path. The assistant stated that the craft's occupants stepped out and wordlessly asked her to hand the body over to them. The assistant complied and the craft flew away, 
but when asked to identify the area where this encounter took place, Zolotov could not trace the location and refused to discuss the matter further. If this was indeed the case, then it would seem that Alyoshunka was taken back by his own people, and the matter would have been closed for good if not for the lack of credence given by those who told this story. Some researchers theorise that Zolotov was intercepted by government agents and ordered to turn the baby over to them. A purported eyewitness even claimed to have been visited by an investigative team of an unknown group of people and urged to sign confidentiality papers and speak nothing more of the body. Then there is the supposition that Zolotov was in fact approached by an eccentric collector interested in purchasing Alyoshunka and readily sold it to him. But this is all speculation which cannot be confirmed. The only thing we know for certain is that Elyashunka's body was never seen again. Ben Lin thought he had heard the last of the case, when in 1997, a woman approached him claiming she had taken the original shawl Tamara Senior had used to wrap the body in and kept it hidden throughout the media frenzy. She told him she would hand the shawl over to him for full DNA examination on the condition that he would investigate it seriously. A condition he was only too eager to agree to after everything that had happened. Ben Lin took the shawl to Tamara Jr. and had her confirm that it was the exact same shawl her mother-in-law had used to cover Alia Shunka with. With her consent, he took it to the Vavilov Institute of General Genetics in Moscow. What followed were several years of constant research and testing and waiting before eventually, the results came back inconclusive. To the disappointment of some, the tests found no residue indicating extraterrestrial origin, but several particles of organic material mixed in with human DNA and flecks of female blood matter suggested a miscarriage or abortion. Trace amounts of alcohol were also found, hinting that the baby had been washed or doused with the substance just prior to being handed over to Bendlin. Although the body itself was missing, the circumstantial evidence that was present led the researchers to conclude that it could not have been anything more than an underdeveloped fetus. In April 2004, Dr. Irina Yermalaiva, one of the initial researchers who had seen the body firsthand, recanted her original 1997 statement and declared that there was nothing alien about the body. To her, the creature was no hoax, but a genuine mummified body that was once living tissue. She found that the state of the body corroborated with numerous cases of miscarried fetuses, often found within 20 to 25 weeks of development. She claimed that she had counted a complete rib cage, an ample shoulder girth and wrist bones, and whilst indeed the head was the strangest aspect of the body, she explained that it could have been incompletely formed during development. In her expert opinion, Dr. Yermaliva stated that the body was deformed as a result of radioactive fallout, which had enormously affected the area of Kaishtem following the nuclear disaster in 1957. She believed the infant had been born prematurely, or was likely miscarried, and that the distraught mother might have abandoned it in the forest for Tamara Senior to find. However, one person did not agree with this finding. Benlin's clinical assistant, Lyubov Ramanova. According to her, numerous children with deformities and premature birth defects were nothing compared to what she had seen in the infant's body. She described that Elia Shanka was simply not of human origin and could note at least 20 different features, which she stated were not commonly found in deformed children. There were many differences in the head and there were a lot of sharp edges in the skull cavity, something never found in children's schools she insisted that human fetuses could not live more than a few hours once exposed. Elyashanka had apparently lived for a few weeks before succumbing, and whilst the experts insist that Elyashanka was nothing more than an underdeveloped fetus, there is the testament from Tamara Jr. that the baby was alive and able to consume food, an impossibility for a human child of that age. Even so, the Kaishtem alien was still making headlines in 1999, when Tamara Sr. attempted to flee the institution where she was being treated for mental illness. One night in September, she was seen on a wooded road outside the facility. Attempts to hail her went unanswered, when suddenly, 
Out of the darkness came a speeding car, running down and killing the elderly woman in what had looked to be a deliberate hit and run. Some conspiracy theorists suggest there was more to this death due to reports that she was going to be placed under hypnosis to recount the entire experience. Could she have been silenced? Again, we are left with more questions and few answers, and although the case may be closed, there is a newfound appreciation for the story, which now appears to grow with each recounting. What was Ali Ashanka? Was he truly an underdeveloped fetus? The tragic result of a radioactive disaster? Or was he an alien being found in a swampy marsh, who lay dying just as he was found and taken in by an elderly woman on the brink of a psychiatric disorder? Did the Russian government want it covered up, to the point of threatening people into keeping quiet, and even silencing the old woman as a final measure? Or have we simply read too much into what was probably a premature or aborted birth? Alia Shankar's origin cannot be determined even to this day, despite a great deal of media coverage and continued interest in his story. Since its publication, it has been met with plenty of scepticism and an equal amount of credibility at the same time. No one denies that something was found in the forest outside of Kaishtem and that whatever it was, briefly touched the life of an elderly woman who selflessly accepted it as though it were her own child. Though it is sad that we find no happy resolution to this case, we can always take comfort in the knowledge that at least in this instance, we saw a rare and brief display of warm-hearted humanity, an elderly woman willing to take in and care for what most others would have rejected, whether Ali Ashanka was alien or entirely human. If indeed he was of extraterrestrial origin and was taken back by his own people, and if there is something that passes for an afterlife in that community, then it is our heartfelt hope that he found peace amongst the stars.